Hey, Sammy here. I'm really excited to show you these boards that I just finished. Uh, they're wall art pieces that I call burn boards because basically I send electricity through these boards and they create these awesome tree and lightning effects. Then I fill them up with colored resin. But I have to warn you, this is a very dangerous process. I send about 15,000 volts through it. And if you're not careful, you could definitely kill yourself or injure yourself. Please don't take this as a tutorial or how-to video. This is just for viewing purposes only for your enjoyment. But check out some of these boards. This is the original state of the board with just finish. And red cedar is very pretty as is. But after I'm done, they turn into like this. And the cool thing is that when you burn it, the board turns super black. And with a bunch of cleanup, I can get it to almost original color, but then it leaves all these stain marks right here, which turn the board very eerie. Look like dark clouds. Kind of reminds me of like a cartoon book or like Berenstain Bears or maybe not. Anyway, I'll show you how I make these. And if you like this video and want to see more content in the future, please subscribe and hit the like button. Thanks for watching. Since these boards are wider than my jointer, I end up using a planar sled, aka double thick melamine, then adding shims, then using hot glue to keep them in place. That way they don't slide around when you send them through the planer. Just a little bit more, then repeat with the other boards. Once I get one side plane on all the boards, I flip them over, then I plane the other side. I end up sanding my boards to 120 before I burn the boards, because in the past when I didn't do this, I noticed that I end up sanding off the tiny leaves on the branches when I had to clean up the resin. Water. Microwave. Put inside. Closed door. One minute. Baking soda. Stir. This is the solution you need to make the boards burn. I'm doing this outside in the dark for effect, but basically the wood needs to soak up the solution in order for electricity to travel through it. Ew. Okay, let's clean these up a little bit. This is how we do it. Clean out burn marks with nylon bristle brush. Blow soot off with leaf blower. Resand with 120. Wood bleach, aka oxalic acid. Mix with water, brush on board. Repeat, then repeat again. Tape off any potential leakage, and that's including the backside. If you ever see your resin like this, don't freak out, cause I already did that. Just give it a bath in hot water for 30 minutes, then you're good to go. For shallow pores, this is what I use. It's a one to one ratio and it cures in about 18 hours. I'm doing three different colors here and they all start with pearl white, but I'm doing a couple that have pearl white alone then the next set, I add a color to that. Then the third set, I add another color to that. <laughs> One big helpful tip is that you want to remove as much resin off the surface as possible. If not, you're going to spend a lot of time sanding later. I did a poor job of this because I was filming. I had a lot of boards to fill and I only had a little bit of open time left. As you can tell, I have a lot of cleanup to do, 
Normally if I were doing this off camera, I would have done a better job getting most of that off. Also during the burn process, these boards warp a little bit, which creates a little bit more work for you for cleanup. And I can't use my drum sander to sand all this off. I just go until I see a little bit of the burn removed, then I stop there, then I do the rest by hand. And since resin is really hard when it's cured, I use 60 grit to remove most of the bulk. And as you can tell, I'm going to be here for a while. A little taste of what this board would look like. So pretty. Right here I'm just cleaning up the sides, but also I'm going to make sure they're parallel as well. Since most of these edges are pretty rough, I end up using 80 grit, then 120, then 150, then I hand sand with 220 later on. And for the tops and bottoms, I end up sanding 150, 180, and 220. And as you could tell, these boards have come a long way since being burned. And here I'm sanding the edges to 220 by hand, and I like to do this because I can feel for rough or sharp spots, then I can address those at that time. Here I'm laser engraving my logo into my boards. And since I don't have a special lens for my camera that can handle lasers, I didn't want to take the chance to burn my lens or damage my sensor in my camera. And about two and a half minutes later, here's my logo. I'm always trying to find ways to cut time or be more efficient, and I've used seal coat or shellac on projects before and got good results. So I wanted to try it on these boards because I can get all three coats in in about an hour or so. And that's way better than what I normally use with water poly, and that takes about all afternoon. So I always start with the bottom, then flip it over, then do the size and top. And making your own painter pyramids is so much better because you can make so many with just scraps of plywood and screws. So I have all these boards sprayed with sanding sealer and since I'm trying to find finish that dries way quicker than water poly, um, I thought sanding sealer would do well because I've used it on other applications. But the one thing that I did notice is that if you look at this, the sanding sealer stands out more shiny on the resin, but the actual wood is more matte-like, and I don't like the way it pops. So I don't know if you can see that. You see all that, right, shiny spots? That's where the resin is, and I don't like that at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sand this with 220 grit for a little bit, then I'm gonna spray it with water poly, which is what I normally use. And I always get a good finish uh, with resin and wood with water poly. So that's what I'm gonna do. And all I do is lightly sand until all the sheen is gone. Welcome to Tent City right now. <clears throat> Whoa. Uh, welcome to Tent City right now. Up here in Alaska, it is snowing and raining right now. So we, how you say, what do you call that, slush? And I don't have a good setup to spray outside and the amount of time it takes to set up and clean up for spraying, even though I find it super annoying. You save so much time spraying during that time than if you were to do it by hand because I did some cabinet work before and I did it by hand and it took me about four hours. I only got one coat on and it took me about less than an hour to do three coats of spray. Total time, not including dry time. So to me, that's worth it. From that, I learned that it's better to take the time to set up, spray, and clean up and break down. Anyway, so I am about to spray these boards. Before, I did it with shellac. And shellac sucked because they end up sitting on top of the resin and not, um, and the wood soaked it up more, so it's kind of matte looking and super high gloss on the resin. So I sanded it back down to 220 to flatten it out. 
and I'm gonna use water poly to spray because I've done water poly before on these boards and they come out awesome. And since this is just artwork, I don't need super fancy water poly. So I just use this stuff. Can you see? I just use this stuff. Verithane, polyurethane, water-based. Anyway, let's go. And here's my setup. This is the Fuji Semi-Pro spray gun system. I really like it. However, one day when I get more advanced and maybe a bigger shop or a better place to have a spray booth, I wanna go the compressor route uh, because these guns are actually pretty expensive. But for what I do, this is an awesome system. Make sure you stir. So one thing about water poly is that it's very milky looking. But however, it sprays on white, dries clear. And always make sure you use a filter because you don't want sediment blocking your uh, airflow on the spray gun. And since I'm gonna do about two coats, since uh, I end up using sanding sealer for that, for the previous attempt, um, the wood's pretty set. So all I had to do is do one light coat on the top. And once that's dry, I'll do maybe a little bit heavier coat on the second one. And that should be good enough for these boards. So I'm gonna fill it to the top because I'm gonna use this gun twice today. And since I filter this, um, I don't mind if this poly gets a little dirty inside. But also, I like to thin my poly out a little bit. They say like six, 10%. I don't know if six is actually accurate, but I just do a couple drops like that to get a little bit more flow, maybe do a little bit more. And I'm ready to set my gun for the right amount of spray. And that'll be on the next clip. So here I start with the airflow all the way down with the widest fan pattern. Then I slowly open up the air until I get a nice even coat. Here I'm just showing you how efficient spraying is. You use such little product. This is all my boards in just one coat. So this is plenty enough for two or three coats. So I just did one coat of water-based poly and the finish is just so much better. This is a satin finish and it's just such a better even finish. Because my problem before, remember, was that the shellac stayed on top of the, the resin while it soaked into the wood. So it left the resin high gloss and the wood matte. So I just had to just lightly sand it with 220. So I'll just do one more coat and I'll probably do a heavier coat because I did a pretty light pass on the first one. And that will be good enough. And this will be done. And it's been about an hour and this is dry, super dry. And before I start the second coat, I just lightly sand with 220. That way you scruff it up a little bit so the next coat can adhere to the first one. And cleanup is super easy. I just use warm water and soap, spray it empty, then I fill it up with warm water again, then I spray until there's just air. And that's it. Super easy cleanup. And pro tip, if you want a faster dry time, this is a must try. Works 
every time. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you liked it, please subscribe and hit the like button below. And here are more close-ups of the final product.